ready to get into the Word of God. Cecile, you got a little Hallelujah. word for us? Yeah, I just have a little word for everybody this morning. Okay. And it's, the Lord is not sitting there. He wants me to share this with you. I was praying this morning. He's not wringing his hands, trying to figure out what to do about your situation. Come on. Hallelujah. So he's um, yes, he, got it under control. Yes, he knows the end from the beginning. He's got it under control. All you have to do is put your faith in him and rest in the finished work of the cross and the blood that he shed Come and on. overcame sin and death on your behalf. So just remember, he's not wringing his hands, trying to figure out how this is going to work out. What's going to happen? He already knows. Put your hand firmly in his Praise the Lord. All right, name. thank you so much. Thank you. All right, let's uh, jump into this message. We're starting a new sermon series. It's called Chosen. How many of you given your life to Jesus Christ? Okay, I'm looking around. Good. If you've given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, you are chosen. We're talking about manifested. Come on now. What does it mean that God's kingdom is being manifested for us? I just uh, had this vision concerning uh, manifestation. I, I saw a gigantic explosion, and then I heard, manifest it. In other words, the greatness, the glory of God, you being chosen manifested an explosion for you for the glory of God. First Chronicles 29, we'll start at verse 11. You got your handouts, get them out. Scripture, scripture please. Yours, O oh Lord, is the what? How many of you believe that God is great? You got to believe that God is great. Yours, O oh Lord, this is David, King David. It's fixing to hand the throng to his son Solomon. He's at the end of his life. I love to hear people write at the end of their life because of all the experience they have received through the years. They're able to communicate that experience to you. I mean, you know, when you're young, you're just learning. Yeah. Pastor Eric, you're just figuring it out. I don't want to read your book when you're just figuring it out. I want, I want to read your book when you're just handing a throne to your son da uh, Solomon. And that's what David's doing right now. And this is what he says, is all of Israel is assembled and the big congregation is there. The people of God are assembled together. And this is what uh, David says. King David says, Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory. Look at your neighbor and say victory. victory. Say chosen, chosen. For, victory. for victory. I mean, you know, when you're chosen, when you're picked, when you're, you're the elect, right. winning. We are on the winning team. How many believe that God is a winner? Yes, and if you're on his team, if, you, if he's chosen you and you're picked for the team, you're winning. Come on now. That's what David says. God, you're great. You have the power. You have the glory. You have the victory and the majesty. Indeed, everything that is in the heavens and in the earth is yours. Yours is the dominion, O Lord. And you exalt yourself as head over what? Over all. Lord, riches are yours. Honor is yours. It all comes from you. You rule, Lord, over all. And in your hand is power and might. Aren't y'all glad y'all on his team? Wait, aren't you glad he lives in you? Wait, all of this lives in you. Greatness, glory, power, majesty, riches, honor. It lives in you. Wait, you're chosen. Look, 30-something years ago, 
when a crazy, I lived a crazy lifestyle. I was beat up by the world. I didn't have a lot of self-esteem about myself. I didn't have a lot of confidence. I thought other people were better than me. Oh, don't look so holy out there. I was judged and looked down upon, even my family, the haters, the criticizers, the, 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 the negative talkers would speak into my life and say, oh, your family's an alcoholic family. Your family's a low-class family. You're never going to be anything. You're never going to do anything with your life. And then all of a sudden, I got the instruction manual. The Bible. And I started reading the Word of God. And as I read the Word of God about the King, King Jesus, and His kingdom, and when you give your life to Him, everything He is, everything He has is a transference. He's given me power of attorney to use His name, even. So my name is now Jesus. Because I walk in His authority, I'm His Son. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, an heir of God and a joint heir of Jesus Christ. And that means that everything my father has because I'm his son is mine because he's chosen me. I chose him and he chose me. And now I'm on the team. Are y'all out there? Amen. Now the Lord is in my heart and in my life. And now I can hold my head up because I'm somebody in him. And so it revolutionized my whole life when I, when I realized the kingdom of God and that he rules over everything. He rules over heaven. He rules over earth. The universe is his. He owns everything in it. And he's mine. And I'm his son. Man, you don't think that I didn't start to think that I could prosper? When the lights came on in me, it changed my whole life. Kingdom changed my life. And listen, if you get a hold to the revelation of, of who you are in him, when you get a, a revelation of whose you are, then it changes your whole life. Are y'all alive in this place today? That's what David was saying. He says, riches and honor, they come from you, God. You're in me. Wait a minute. God, you're in me. And you rule over all. And in your hand is power. And in your hand is might. And it lies in your hand to make great and to strengthen everyone. Now, therefore, O oh God, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify you and your name. You are God and there is none beside you. You are my God. You live in me and I give you glory and honor. I'm grateful. I'm thankful. Listen, can I help you a little bit today? Gratefulness and thankfulness in your heart will help you with depression. It will help you with self-esteem. It will help you with negative talking. As soon as you become grateful and thankful to God and understand who he is and who you are in him it'll help you in your life you gotta be grateful you gotta be thankful not because of you but because of him and that he's in your life you're chosen yes chosen you're in his kingdom man that's a place to shout that's a place to run so you ask the question, what am I chosen for? What? When am I chosen? You're chosen by God, and what does it mean? It means that God has placed you into his kingdom. It's a divine kingdom. He's placed you into his family. You are now in the God family. Jesus is king of his kingdom, and Jesus rules by divine sovereignty over all. <laughs> Listen. It's good to be with the one that owns it all and runs it all. <laughs> I don't know. If you can't get excited about that, <laughs> there just ain't no excitement in you. The Lord has prepared his throng in the heavens 
and his kingdom rules over all. Psalms 103, verse 19. So when does God's kingdom start? God's kingdom starts now, the day you make Jesus Christ Lord and Savior of your life. And here's the scripture. The law and the prophets were unto John. Since that time, the kingdom of God is priest and every man passes into it, Luke 16, 16. That just simply means that every man has the opportunity to enter into the kingdom of God. You pass through it. You have an opportunity. I hope today and I pray today and for all of you guys that are watching us all over, my prayer today is, is that you enter into God's kingdom if you have not already. I pray that the king, King Jesus, Jesus will become your Lord and Savior. You will enter into his kingdom and everything that he has, all of his riches, all of his honor will come into your life and the blessing of God, the miraculous power and blessing of God will start to operate through your life from this day forward. That's my prayer. Because when you believe God, supernatural things happen. The kingdom releases the authority of God in your life and it causes you to be calipoted. It causes God's blessing to come into your life. You go from the curse to the blessing. Things really start working right in your life. Are y'all can things start working right. I never forget in my life when I was under a curse. You ever felt like just things are not going right? Something is wrong in my life. In fact, the something wrong in my life made me start to look for answers. I literally said this to myself. I said, normal people are not having this much bad luck. I literally said that. I said, this is not normal because nothing's going right. Everything I touch falls apart. How many of you know that the curse is God trying to reach you? He's trying to give you the revelation. How many of you know that sometimes bad will teach you what is good? And so that's what was happening in my life. And so I said, man, I need to get some answers. I remember that they, they said the answers was in that book called the Bible. I'm 22 years old. Lost as a goose in a hailstorm. Nobody had to tell me I was a sinner. <laughs> I knew I was a sinner. So sometimes good folks have a harder time figuring it out that they're sinners. But I knew I was a sinner. Even lost knew I was a sinner. And I knew something was wrong, and I picked up the book, the Bible, and that's when I started reading 35 years ago. And as I did, the revelation of God's kingdom came into my heart i'll never forget now y'all have heard me say it matthew 6 33 it said seek ye first the kingdom of god and all of his righteousness and everything else will be added i said man that is it can, that cannot be that easy <clears throat> there's no way that all i got to do is seek god and put him first and everything else will work itself out that can't that that, that cannot be but I've reached such a low level in my life that I'm willing to try anything. So I told God, I said, God, I don't have anything to lose. I mean, so I said, I'm going to give you a try. Now, I don't suggest you give God a try. Just do God, all right? Don't try him. And when I did that, the miraculous supernatural power of God's kingdom literally came into my life the favor came into my life how many of you know that all you need is God's favor yeah. doors will automatically open for you with God's favor and so as the favor of God came into my life through the kingdom of God then things started working right now I'm going to be honest with you it took about six months of planning the right things in my life before I started seeing a godly harvest in my life. It almost works just like the sowing and reaping. You plant the seed. It takes about six months before that seed actually comes to fruition to manifest fruit. 
And so it works the same way, you know, in the earth, it's, it's uh, seed time and harvest. It works in the spiritual realm the same way as it works in the physical realm because everything in the physical came from the spiritual. Can I get an amen? amen. So you got to understand when you first give your life to Christ, you can't get discouraged because you're still reaping some of that bad stuff that you planted in your life. But you keep sowing the good stuff in your life. You keep sowing the seed of the kingdom of God. And I'm telling you, a harvest is coming in your life. God will supernaturally move in your life. And I saw it start to happen. I saw it change. And that was 35 years ago. And I cannot tell you the the greatness and the goodness of God and what he's done in me and Jeannie's life and in our whole family's life. Listen, my whole family is saved. Shout somebody. They're living for God. And, And the same blessing that's on us is passing down to them. And of course, y'all know we, we taught legacy for a whole month. So now they're reaping a godly legacy in their life because we got a hold to the truth of God's word through his kingdom. And now the kingdom of God's resurrecting power, the glory of God is now passing down from me into my precious family and into their kids. And come on now, generation after generation, Come on now, we're a godly seed in God's favor and God's blessing through the kingdom of the living God is in our lives and now we're blessed beyond words. We're blessed by the glory of God. That's how it works. So God rules the universal kingdom. Though you do have to understand that there are kingdoms that God permits within his universal kingdom. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. God permits the kingdom of darkness. It's directed by Satan who challenges the sovereignty of God's rule. Why? Because of free mortal agency. And this is what I believe. I believe that God could take the devil and every demon out at any second he chose. I believe he's sovereign. I believe the Lord is permitting the devil and the demons to operate their kingdom of darkness because he's using them to do something that is his will and his purpose in our lives. I don't think the devil is not without purpose from God. Now you're saying, brother, did God create the devil? Does God create evil? I don't believe that. I believe there's free mortal agency. I believe that demons... I believe angels have a free will and they had a choice and some choose not to serve God. When, 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 when Satan said that I'm going to lead a rebellion against God's authority, I'm no longer going to lead God's worship services in heaven any longer. The Bible said in Luke chapter 10, Jesus said, I beheld Satan like lightning coming out of the sky, right? Um, the, the disciples were rejoicing that demons were subject unto them. And Jesus said, don't be rejoicing because demons are subject to you and you have authority over them through the kingdom power, but rather rejoice that your names are written in the Lamb's book of life. And then he said, and I beheld, let me tell you about the devil. I beheld Lucifer, Satan, like lightning coming out of the sky. And so when he rebelled against God by his free will, He became an enemy of God and he was no longer able to to be in the heavens with God. Though that there's three heavens, God's throne heaven, the the starry heaven, and then there's another heaven under that. Are y'all alive out there? The devil has the authority to be the prince of the power of the air. So he's able to be in the atmosphere heaven. Um, and I don't even really, I don't even really want to get off into it because it, it's a it's a big teaching because in the end times, the devil is actually going to have access to God's throne, and um, that's during the, the the end times. And I don't even want to get into it right now. So here's where I'm at, Ms. Ann. The end times. I know. <laughs> <laughs> here's where we're at. 
God allows the enemy, the devil, he's permitted, he's got a permit to operate under the jurisdiction of God. And God is using him. When the devil brings an accusation or comes against us, he brings bad against us, it actually teaches us the goodness of God. And so, therefore, when the devil attacks us, it actually teaches us how good God is, and it causes us as free mortal ages to make a decision for God. Sometimes bad will teach you what is good. And I believe that's why he's got a permit. I believe the Lord issued him a permit for a certain season to operate because God is using the devil in our lives. Now, I know you say, man, over. Oh, God, pew! God could do that right this second. He's sovereign. He has all authority over heaven and in earth. He runs the universal kingdom. By the way, that's why you want to be on his team because his is the winning team, right? The kingdom of darkness is the losing team. They will lose ultimately. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city, every house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he's divided against himself. How shall his kingdom stand? Here's my thought about that. Division is never God's kingdom. Never. That's a kingdom of darkness. And so we all have to say uh, to, to our own hearts and in our households that we refuse to operate in division. We choose God over division in our households. Why? Because Jesus teaches us that division is a work of darkness, and he was blamed by the Pharisees that said in, in this context, the Pharisees said that the, the way you're casting demons out, Jesus, and think how crazy this is, is because you've made a pact with the devil, Beelzebub, the Lord of flies. So the reason why you're able to cast demons out, Jesus, what the Pharisees were saying is because you have an agreement with the kingdom of darkness. And Jesus came back and said, look, if the kingdom of darkness is working against itself, how shall it stand? A house divided against itself cannot stand. Can I tell you in your family, in your marriage, if you've got division, if you've got schism, if there's, there, you're separated, that's the kingdom of darkness. Why? Because the kingdom of God is unity. The kingdom of God is agreement. Listen, you, got, you step out of this kingdom and into the kingdom of God, or you step into the kingdom of darkness. And as soon as you step into the kingdom of darkness, it releases the atmosphere of that kingdom. Somebody said, well, how can I be in the kingdom of God and still operate in the kingdom of darkness? Because you have a will. You have to choose to walk in the fullness of God's kingdom on a daily basis. God is king. He is the universal kingdom. He has all authority in heaven and earth. The problem is, is you have to make a decision in your life. Will my family live in division? Will my family live in schism? Will we come together and talk it out and walk in agreement? Or will we allow the kingdom of darkness, which is the kingdom of ignorance, darkness is ignorance, to operate in your life to cause havoc? Listen. Make a decision that we choose God's kingdom over the kingdom of darkness. We refuse to live in this church in disagreement. You may have to agree to disagree. Some of you don't believe like me. Some of you might have said, man, I don't, I don't believe that thing that God's letting the devil live. I love you just the same. We agree to disagree. It's all right. We're still in agreement because I love you even if you're wrong. That's my opinion. Hallelujah. By the way, we all are entitled to our own way. Right? Don't, don't think nothing into that. Because everybody's got one, right? So, 
So I must choose God then over temptation. Here's the three things that you got to choose God over. Three things. You got to choose God over division. You got to refuse to let the devil operate in your household. You got to choose God over temptation because the the devil's going to tempt you. The last one is you got to choose God over pride. But you've got to choose God over temptation. I must choose God over temptation. And the devil said unto Jesus when he tempted Jesus in the wilderness. Remember 40 days without eating. First temptation was turn this uh, stone into bread, right? Um, and then he comes and he hits him again with the kingdoms of the world. He says all this power. He showed him all the world kingdoms. All the powers of the world. He says, all of this will I give you and the glory of them, which is mine to give, is delivered unto me and I give it to whomsoever I will. I, the devil, can give it away. So here's what the devil said. Jesus is tempted. He took him on the mountain and he says, see all the world kingdoms, the glory of them, all the wealth of the world, all of this will I give you if you will bow down and worship me. You know why it was so crucial? Because the first Adam lost the dominion, the authority of God. Jesus is the second Adam. That's right. Jesus came to buy back what Adam lost. If Jesus would have submitted to the world, going after the kingdoms of the world and not the kingdom of God, he would have forfeited him receiving back what we lost. <laughs> and Jesus said, it is written again, you shall not worship anybody but the Lord your God. And the Bible said in Luke chapter 4, the devil left him for a season until there would be another opportunity to tempt him. Can I just tell you that there are times in your lives, saints, that you got to hold steady. You got to you got to get down and you got to hunker down, man, because there's wave of demons that hit you at certain times that's more warfare than at other times. And during those times that you're attacked by the waves of demons in your family and in your household, you got to hold your ground. You got to you got to get your feet planted, man. You got to you got to hunker down, man, and wage war and fight. And let me tell you something, the devil gets tired. You just wear him out. The devil quit, the devil quit tempting me with other women, right? Because after 30-something years, he says, man, I'm just wore down. That guy's not biting. He's, he quit tempting me with cocaine. After 30-something years, he says, man, this ain't working. We're going to have to find something else. So... So, just like Jesus was tempted, you have got to choose God over all the temptations of the world because the enemy's going to come and tempt you. And by the way, it's a design by God because what happens is, is when the devil tempts you and you stand your ground, you grow in your faith. When you go through pressure in life, then you learn how to handle pressure in in life so that you can move God's kingdom forward so that you can move your family forward in other words you've got to go through the trying you have to go through the testing you have to go through the tempting because it's working on work on the inside it's making you something great you will never be great till you've been proven your faith has to be proven in God and this is part of the process called life What does it cost you? You just asked me. I heard you. It cost you everything. Because you got to fight with everything that's within you. But just know the devil's making you something great. I love what, he, uh, what Peter told, uh, what Jesus told Peter. He said, look, Peter, he said, this was just before he was uh, ar arrested. He says, look. The devil's asked for permission. <laughs> I 
the devil had to go to the kingdom of God to get permission first. Look, the devil knows who the boss is. And he said he's asked to sift you like weed. He wants to test you. He wants to try you. And permission was granted to the devil, so I prayed, Peter, not that we would break the devil's neck and keep him from testing you. I prayed that your faith would not fail during the testing. Because you see, Peter, I know where you're going in your life because I'm the God of your future. I've already seen your life. I've already seen the end of your life at the beginning. And I know things that you don't know. So I know that you have to go through this so that it does something in here so that you're equipped to do what, what you're going to do in the future. In other words, without this testing and without this strength that you're going to get from this test, without the proving of your faith, you will never have what it takes to go where I am sending you in your life. So I prayed for your faith that your faith won't fail you, Peter. I mean, you know, it's good when Jesus is praying for you. By the way, he's making intercession for us day and night at the right hand of God the Father. And ultimately, you know, Peter did fall. He says, and Peter, he said, I prayed for your faith. He says, and when you are restored, when you are converted is what the King James says, strengthen your brethren. In other words, take every experience. When you fell down and you got back up and dusted off, make sure you share that with your brothers so that when they go through their testing, they will have your experience, which will be a strength in them to help them fight through too, to help them become everything that God has called them to be as well. So God permits governments. God permits kingdoms. It's almost like going to the city and getting a permit. Permit is permission. Permission granted to operate your business, your, your kingdom. Look, there's nothing wrong with your kingdoms. As long as your kingdom is submitted to the king of kings, his kingdom. In fact, you're called by God to build businesses. You're called by God to govern and to rule and to reign in planet Earth. So you are called by God to do great things. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with money. Money's not the root of evil. It's the love of money that's the root of all evil. And if you think money's so evil, bring it to me, and I'm going to sanctify it and pay the electric bill with it. So. Money is an attitude. My, uh, uh, the love of money is an attitude, man. It's, it, it, it's, it's, it's you loving it. So money in itself is not evil. It's the way you treat money. If it becomes your God, then you, you, it, it's become the root of all evil in your life. Success is a test. I must choose God over pride. I used King Nebuchadnezzar that built the great Babel, Babylonian kingdom. And amazing, it says kingdom here. I, in my phone as I was, re, I was talking to it, I said kingdom, it, it, it typed out kingdom. And I thought, yes, that's who Nebuchadnezzar was, kingdom. <laughs> So I'm going to leave it in there. So that's not, and I already got reproved. I sent it out to some of our leaders and they sent me a message back saying, hey, you know, you got a typo error in there. It says King Dumb. I said, no, Nebuchadnezzar was kind of dumb. He said, I got it. I got it. I said, so that's why I left it. How many of you know that when you start to exalt yourself and elevate yourself and you think you're bigger than God and that you're all that, that you might lose your mind? You know the story of um, 
Nebuchadnezzar was, he had a dream. Have you ever had a dream? And in his dream, he saw this gigantic tree that grew up bigger than anything he'd ever seen. Maybe a tree as big as this, this room here, 18,000 square feet here. And he saw it grow and the limbs spread out to all the earth. And he saw animals that shaded under the tree and the fruit that, uh, that the tree produced fed the whole world. It was magnificent. And then all of a sudden he saw the tree get cut down. And he was heartbroken. He called all the soothsayers, the, the people that didn't have God, but they were, they were people that operated in uh, like sorcery. And he asked them to interpret the dream and none of them could interpret the dream and Daniel was there. And when Daniel came in the presence of the king, the king says, listen, Daniel, uh, none of my other people could interpret the dream, but could you see if you could interpret it? And Daniel says, yeah, I'll see if I can. And King Nebuchadnezzar started telling him the dream. And Daniel said this, First thing he said, he said, oh, my God. And the king said, what? He saw Daniel's face. His face kind of got ghost looking like white. And the king realized then that he didn't have good news. And he, and he told Daniel, he says, Belshazzar, he says, that was Daniel's name in Babylon. He says, don't be afraid to tell me the interpretation of the dream. And Daniel immediately said, he says, King, he says, I wish this dream was for your enemies. I mean, you know, that's bad when you get in a word. It says, man, I wish that this wasn't for you. <laughs> I mean, you know, you're feeling like this is one meeting. I don't feel it in my gut to show up for and Daniel said, the tree that you saw that grew up is the great Babylon. And the great Babylon feeds the entire world. And there are many people that are shaded under its covering and protected by this big tree. And so you saw the animals that, that were under the tree protected. And then when you saw the tree get cut down, you understand then that the tree is you and your kingdom. And the voice of the holy ones, the messengers of God that bring the word of God to earth to manifest it are commanded by God to cut the tree down. In fact, they've got the steel chainsaws and big tree. Wee! They're cutting. <laughs> the good news is, though, King, is we're commanded not to get the track hoe and dig the root out. We're commanded to leave the root. Because, King, one day you're going to be reinstated, your administration. One day you're going to be put back in where, you, where, but for a short season, King, there's some learning lessons. You need to go to school for seven years. And the King received the word, and the Bible says within 12 months, the king had forgotten all about the word of the Lord. I mean, no, you better never forget the word of God. No matter where you go, you better not forget the word of God. The Bible says the king was up on one of his big buildings on the roof. And he looked across great Babylon. And this is what he said as pride rose up in his heart like a bandit rooster. All of this great Babylon have I created with my own hands and its majesty is mine. It's for me. And the Bible says about that time a voice came from a messenger in heaven and said, Oh, king, 
Today's your day to start school for the first day. And we will start with a cow brain in you. I mean, you know, you don't listen to God, you could lose your mind. You could wake up a cow. All of a sudden, you wake up mooing. You take your robe off, your purple robe. You, you walk down off of your gigantic roof, and, and, and there's the bellboy there, and you just walk right past him in, in, in your T-shirt. One of them, them T-shirts has got the little skinny thing on it. <laughs> Out in your boxers. And they ask, oh, oh, well, King, King, well, are you all right? Where are you going? Moo! Moo! I need some grass. I, I, I love chewing cud all night. I can't wait for my nails to grow out and my hair. I don't need to cut my hair at least seven years. And I love to wake up because I've been camping without a tent. Because there was a time I couldn't afford a tent with my son at Cub Scouts. So I told my son that sissies have tents. Men sleep out under the stars like us. And we wake up with a sore throat all wet. And the Bible says the dew came on Nebuchadnezzar because he was out all night in the field grazing, eating grass. He thought he was a cow. Moo! Moo! Give me a good cow. Yeah. I need a cow voice that feels like he's out of place. <laughs> And the Bible says after seven years, the revelation came into him. And the king rose up off the ground. And the Bible says he looked to heaven. And he said, I give God all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. For there is none but him he's over all he is lord he's lord over all of heaven over all of earth and i bow my head before the great god of heaven and earth and when he did that restoration he activated the kingdom of god and the power of god's influence and glory and riches and honor came into his life and the bible says that he went up to the palace and put his robe back on on, and all of his uh, all of his leaders came back around him and he started counseling them and tell him and the bible says that his kingdom was better than it ever was before god had restored everything back to him and even more but he got it through the revelation the, in fact daniel says that you'll be in the field grazing like a cow until you learn that god is god and there is none besides him till you put him first in your life let's go down to number four real quick number four in your handout kingdom power and qualifications a who and how and I'm going to quickly go through these. And we talk about releasing God's kingdom in your life. Somebody said, how do you release God's kingdom? I took a couple examples from God's word. The first example was the 10 lepers. Do y'all remember? How did they receive from God's kingdom? The Bible says that they cried out to Jesus. Listen, can I tell you today that if you'll cry out to Jesus, the Lord will cleanse you. If you will call upon the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. B, let's look at B. You, you got all the scriptures there. I thought about the woman that was caught in adultery. Do y'all remember? And I thought something profound. I thought about my own life and how I came into the kingdom. I wasn't looking for the kingdom of God. I wasn't expecting the kingdom of God. In fact, I had accusers and haters and criticizers that actually came against me. And they brought me to a place that I did not want to go. 
But the place that they brought me to, the kingdom of God was hanging out in the atmosphere. Sometimes in your life, God is so good and so great that you can go to a place that you don't want to go to. And, and you can find something that you never knew was there because you're blind. And in that place, like the woman that was, was, was uh, judged for adultery. By the way, where's the guy at? Last time I checked, it takes two for adultery. But here's the deal. She is being judged. She's being hated on. She's embarrassed in the public square. And, and now she's brought to Jesus. Jesus, they're telling Jesus, look, Moses' law says to stone her if she's caught in adultery. What do you say, Jesus? Jesus just kept writing in the ground, didn't even give him any attention. Finally, he just said, you who without sin be the first one to cast the stone. They started dropping rocks and walking off. My point is this, is God's kingdom is so great and so good that sometimes you don't go after it, it goes after you. And the woman received the blessing of God's kingdom in a place that she never, ever would have chose on her own will to go to. In fact, it was a place that she dreaded and had, didn't want anything to do with. It was a place of shame. It was a place of embarrassment. It was a place of judgment. It was a place of criticism. It was a place of hatred and anger that was against her. And it was a place of fear where she was scared to death for her life. And, and when she was oppressed, the goodness of God's kingdom always attracted to oppression. When she was oppressed and judged, the kingdom of God showed up to rescue her and deliver her and to influence her, to save her, and to change her life. The kingdom of God will show up in a place that you never expected, that you wasn't looking for. Boom! The temple door opens and the Holy Ghost snatches you. Boom! Close the door into the kingdom. Saved. Delivered. I thought about the next guy, C, right here. C. Survey says C. <laughs> Thought about the woman with the issue of blood. I'm coming to a close. I thought about a woman for 12 long years. She paid everything that she ever had to the doctors and she was none the better. She had an, an embarrassing condition with her body. In fact, the law of that day said that she was unclean and was not even fit to be in public. Then at that time, women were looked upon as property, which is wrong. And so they didn't have the freedom to, to be into the streets and mingle among the crowds of people because of their gender. But this woman had heard about the kingdom of God. Jesus is king of his kingdom. And she had heard about the goodness of God and the power of God. And she knew in her heart, she says, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, the influence and power of that kingdom will come into my life and I will be healed. And she pressed through the crowds fighting to get to Jesus. Can I tell you, if you'll fight for Jesus, Jesus will fight for you. And she fought through the crowd. She finally got to Jesus. Jairus has got Jesus because his daughter's on the deathbed and Jesus is going with Jairus. Jairus is a religious Jewish leader. Ain't even supposed to be hanging out with Jesus. But he's desperate, man. My daughter's going to die. So you can, the law and all that, ain't no power and no law. There's power in this guy. I'm bringing this guy to my house to heal my daughter. So, so Jairus and Jesus are going to his house to, to heal his daughter. And, and, and the woman presses through the crowd. And when she presses through the crowd, she touches the hem of his garment. When she touches Jesus, 
the power of Christ, the power of his kingdom, like lightning, woof, and she, woof, healed. Jesus hollers, who touched me? And Peter with his big mouth said, are you crazy? Who touched you? All these people cramming, pushing on all of us. Who touched you? Jesus said, oh no, Peter. There was one that touched me that believed in me. There was one that touched me that went after me with all of our heart. And when she went after me with all of our heart, something supernatural, virtue went out of me. That kingdom power like lightning hit her. And Jesus pressed the point. Jairus is trying to pull Jesus to get him away because I need you quickly to save my daughter. She's dying. Jesus stops and says, no, who was it? And the little woman realizing that she was fixing to be found out, scared. The Bible says she was trembling. She was like, it was me, sir. It was me. I know I shouldn't be out here. I know I'm unclean, but I just had to go after you. And Jesus said, woman, thy faith has healed thee. And Jesus takes off with Jairus. On the way, as Jesus is going, let me tell you something, the devil's going to try to keep you from the influence of the kingdom of God. He's going to try to keep you from the power of God. Because on his way with Jairus, immediately people from Jairus' house came, oh, stop, your daughter's already dead, Jairus. Ain't no need for Jesus to come to your house now. It's too late. How many times the devil tell us it's too late? You lying devil. It ain't too late. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. It don't matter if she's dead. She's fixing to get up. Listen, can I tell you that the kingdom of God will show up in your life at a time you don't expect it? Can I tell you, if you have faith for God and believe God, that the kingdom of God will manifest for desperation. When you desperately go after him, he will honor your faith and heal you. When you go after him, he'll go after you. And so here we are at Jairus' house. Everybody's mourning and crying. And Jesus said, why are y'all crying? She's sleeping. Peter, James, and John, y'all got some faith. Come on with me. They went into the house. And immediately Jesus told her, he said, girl, get up. She, she, she stood up and said, Jesus said, get her something to eat. And he raised her from the dead. Listen, let me tell you something about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God will save you. The kingdom of God will deliver you. The kingdom of God will heal you. The kingdom of God will raise something dead in your life. Listen, some kind of vision, some kind of dream, something that God told you years ago. The devil's been telling you you're too old. It could never happen again. Can I tell you? The kingdom of God is able. You are chosen. Chosen by God. Who in here says, I want the kingdom in my life? Raise your hand. I'm looking for 100%. I'm looking. Now keep your hands up. If you don't have your hand up, I need to see you. You don't want the kingdom. You don't want God's favor and blessing in your life. You don't want things to go right. You don't want resurrection from the dead. You don't want healing. You don't want deliverance. You don't want power. You don't want honor. You don't want riches. You want greatness. If that's you and you say, I don't want it, now put your hands down. Now, you don't want the kingdom of God. Put your hands down. You don't want it. Raise your hand. You don't want Jesus. Don't, Miss Joan. You don't want Jesus. You don't want his kingdom. You don't want blessing in your life. Looks like we got 100% today. Looks like we got 100%. Let's pray. Say, Lord, I believe in you. Lord, I trust you and your kingdom. Lord, I want to be chosen by you. Lord, I'm on your team. Kingdom! And
quickly say, say, Jesus, forgive me. I make you my Lord and my Savior. Hey, if you prayed that, God's doing something great in your hearts and lives right now. Now I'm going to decree and I'm declare God's kingdom in your life. Father, today, we don't believe that it's just about coming to church. We believe it's about kingdom. We don't believe that church within itself or building has any power. But we believe with all of our heart, Jesus, that you have all power in heaven and in earth. So, Lord Jesus, we believe and we decree according to your word that says that we are blessed going out, blessed coming in, blesses our knitting bow, our cabinets are overflowing. Even when our enemy comes at us one way, Lord, you take up our slack and you cause them to flee seven ways. God, we're the head and not the tail. We're above and not beneath. We are blessed everywhere we go. Everything we touch multiplies and has good success. Now the favor of our God and his kingdom be in each one of your lives. I bless you now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Have a great, great, great day. We love you.